Injury and violence is one of the 12 leading health indicators identified by the federal government's public health initiative, Healthy People 2020. Injuries caused by accidents and violence makes the list of top 10 killers of Americans. Teens are especially vulnerable to injuries. Each year, 5.2 million adolescents are treated in emergency rooms for non-fatal injuries, and another 9,500 adolescents are killed every year by injuries. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention classifies injuries into two categories. Intentional injuries, or violence, and unintentional injuries, also called accidents. The CDC considers violence, or intentional injuries, to be related to suicide, homicide, youth violence, family violence, and intimate partner violence. Unintentional injuries are those that occur as a result of falls, fires, drowning, poisoning, motor vehicle accidents, and recreational activities. 42% of injury-related deaths amongst adolescents are caused by violence. Thousands of teenagers take their own lives each year, and thousands more are killed by gun violence. Indeed, suicide and homicide fall within the top five killers of individuals between the ages of 10 and 24. This is a tragic statistic. It is imperative that our country bands together to address this epidemic of violence by making mental health and gun control top priorities. Unintentional injuries are the number one cause of death for individuals between the ages of 1 and 44. That means that more people in this age group die from accidental injuries every year than for any other reason. Amongst teenagers, car accidents are the most common cause of death from unintentional injury. Poisoning, drowning, fires, and falling are also common causes of accidental death amongst adolescents. Most people do what they can to avoid accidents, but unfortunately, unintentional injuries can happen to anyone. The likelihood of injury increases when risky behaviors are combined. For example, combining alcohol with driving can have fatal results. Failing to use safety equipment like helmets and pads during recreational activities can also lead to injuries. Accidents can happen to anyone, and they're certainly more likely when risks are combined. But it's helpful to realize that you can plan in advance to help reduce your risk of injury. Injury prevention planning involves taking steps to ensure your safety when participating in various activities. A multifaceted approach to injury prevention involves applying more than one safety method and involving multiple people from the community in the planning process. This might mean working with your friends, family, school, or even lawmakers to come up with several layers of injury prevention strategy. Just knowing which activities and behaviors are common causes of injury can help you to avoid them. For example, we have learned that car accidents are the number one killer of teens. Here's what an injury prevention plan might look like for motor vehicle activities. On an individual level, You and your friends could pledge to always wear seatbelts and never text and drive or drive while under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Promise to hold each other accountable to these standards. Parents or other family members can model safe driving and also provide supervision for their teens who are learning to drive. The community can do their part for accident prevention by offering driver's education courses through schools, community centers, or through private businesses. Also helpful are community-based events geared toward awareness of driving under the influence. Mothers Against Drunk Driving, or MAD, is an organization that aims to raise awareness of the impacts of drunk driving and how to avoid driving under the influence. Students Against Destructive Decisions, or SAD, is another organization that could organize safe driving campaigns or events. As far as legislation is concerned, there are already quite a few laws governing motor vehicle activities. Drive along any street and you will see numerous signs posting speed limits and other rules of the road that help make driving safer for everyone. Most states require that young people obtain permits for driving, and in many places there are driving curfews to keep teens off the road late at night. Before obtaining a driver's license, applicants are required by law 
to pass both a written test and a practical driving test. Laws also exist establishing legal limits for blood alcohol content while driving. Consequences for breaking motor vehicle laws may include fines, vehicle confiscation, suspension of driving privileges, and even jail time. As you can see, there are many aspects to a multifaceted injury prevention plan and many people involved in applying these strategies. The purpose of creating an injury prevention plan is to reduce risks and avoid injuries. Hopefully, by working together within our communities and through legislation, we can change the statistics regarding injury and violence.